Hey, what's going on guys? This is Evan with Salt Strong, bringing you another on the water reports of actually one of my favorite early winter fishing days that I have ever had. So guys, stay tuned because in this video you will learn about a very, very underrated spot to catch wintertime gator trout. I actually uh, pulled out my personal best on this day, so I had a ton of fun doing it. On the good old new Salt Strong Mulligan, the 1 8 ounce weighted Haas Helix hook, and the good old Power Prawn on a quarter ounce Texas Eye jig head. Stay tuned, hope you enjoy it. So you get airy to me for speckled trout. Let's put a little bit of pro care on there. I see stuff like right over there that looks good. Points like right there. <clears throat> if you don't know where to fish, fish docks. I've never been here. I mean, this whole area looks pretty trouty, honestly. We're bound to run into some fish today at some point at least. I guarantee it. <sighs> that was not the best cast. <laughs> All right, let's take the tide back and try some of those other areas, I guess. Oh, something jumping right there. Uh, that was a good cast. That's a fish. Finally, finally got one. What is that? I think that's a trout. Finally, man, on the mole again. Yes, found one, finally. Oh, dude, that's a good trout. Oh my gosh, that is a good trout. Yeah, baby, yes. Yes! <laughs> Let's go. Awesome, man. I finally got a trout. That's a good trout, man. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Look at that. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. That's a good fish. Yeah, that's close to an 18 inch trout, man. Heck yeah. Slam that thing. Ooh, I'm getting more breaks over there. There's gotta be more in there, man. All right, guys, let's try to Try to get another one with a little bit of scent also. There's another one, yes! Gotcha. Found some, man. Oh my gosh, that's another quality. Oh no, that's a redfish. Okay, good to see you, my friend. Okay, well, that's, that might barely be a slot, but I'm not keeping this guy. I don't like to keep reds that often. All right, so it looks like, uh, guys, that we found um, some more fish. I, I keep seeing breaks, so there's gotta be more over there. They're just trying to stay out of the uh, out of the current, it looks like. The wind's still going this way, though, but it's not too strong, so it makes sense why they're still right there. It's not a bad redfish, man. Yeah, it's probably like a 16-inch redfish is my guess, so we'll let this guy go, though. See you, buddy. Uh. There might be an oyster bit over here that I'm just not hooking up with. Why well, I keep catching them? Is that another one? No, it's grass. That's a fish! Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. I thought that was grass. I think that's another red. I don't know, hopefully that's a trout, man. I'd love to catch, yeah, it's a red. I'd love to catch more trout though. Found some reds though, at least. Oh dude, that's a good red, I think. Oh, <laughs> yep, that's a good red. Heck yeah. No, that's a trout. Oh my gosh, dude. That's a trout. Oh my gosh, that is a good trout. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, guys, that is a good trout. Oh my gosh. 
Please don't get off the hook. Oh my gosh. Dude, that is an awesome trout. Please don't get off the hook. Oh my God, that's a stud trout. Oh my God, that's probably my personal best trout right there. Yes, dude, let's go. Let's go. Dude, that is a stud trout. Oh my gosh, guys. This thing is a monster. No way. Guys, look at this fish that I just caught on the mulligan. Oh my gosh, that is a stud fish right there. That is by far my biggest trout. Look at that guy. That is a beast, dude. Almost 25 inch trout, 24 and a half. I'm gonna do the right thing and let this guy create more trout. We've already got a trout shortage in North Carolina apparently, so I'm gonna let him go. See you, buddy. Got him. Oh, dude, that is another good one. Oh my gosh. Yes, dude, let's go. It's another good fish. Heck yeah. That's another good fish, man, on the mulligan. I'm keeping this guy for sure. I might get a limit today, man. If I just keep pulling these fish out of that spot, I'll probably get a limit. All right, guys, I got, I got slime all over me. You can probably tell, but uh, I'm gonna keep working that spot. Just a few more casts, man. I, I literally just caught a slam right there. And sorry I didn't get the flounder on the uh, the head cam, uh, but I, oh, I'm still seeing activity. I don't know if you guys saw that, but still getting stuff over there. So I'm going to keep working it. And then if I don't get any bites within the next, like, I don't know, dozen casts or so, then I'm going to uh, keep searching because there has to be more trout around here in the shallows. If there's this much water and if they're still feeding, I'm bound to get more. So I'm going to keep at it and stop talking. Stay tuned. Got him. Got him. Oh my gosh. I think that's a slot I just caught. A slot red maybe or another trout hopefully that was a hard thump oh my gosh yeah i just caught a slot man <laughs> he hit that thing so hard guys okay there you go, there's another redfish. That's definitely a slot. That's probably a, barely an 18 or 19 incher though. I'm gonna let him go. See ya. Oh, that was money. Just one more thump, I got him. So guys, at this point, the fishing just became kind of silly, honestly. Um, it was kind of just one hook set after another. I managed several slot redfish and also a few trouts and that big gator trout, as you guys already saw. And it was obvious that they were schooled up together, but they were there for a reason. Now, this wasn't just a random spot. So this particular spot, it was, again, a tide dependent spot. So at low tide, it was bone dry and, you know, there was nowhere for the fish to go but out. So I was actually at one entrance of this kind of little creek area and the redfish and the trout were actually coming through the other area, um, the other side of this creek. So the fish are really just kind of stacking up. Um, there was a little bit of submerged grass underneath the water. You know, just enough so those redfish could just kind of chill on the bottom, be lazy, uh, kind of hide just a little bit. So they really didn't have to move much as the bait had to push out of this particular spot. So guys, that is what I got on this day. I managed to pull out several slot redfish and some awesome trout as you saw. But guys, like I said, I had to grind on this day. It wasn't like I launched straight away and I managed to get on all those fish all at once, just like that. So guys, a majority of those fish were caught at a tide dependent spot, meaning that at low tide, and I went back to this spot, but at low tide, it was bone dry and there was no actual water for those fish to be in. So those fish had to push out as the tide dropped. So guys, this correlates with the 90-10 zone. So if you don't know what that is, and if you are not happy with the amount of fish that you catch, the 90-10 zone is the method that Salt Strong implements where 90% of the feeding fish are going to be in 10% of the waters. So if you guys want a personalized recipe for you to find the 90-10 zone, make sure that you go to saltstrong.com recipe 
And we hope to see you guys in the insider community as well if you haven't already signed up. And we hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.